Hey subscribers, Mike Oaks here at uh, Work Truck Week and we came by and met Eric here at Blue Arc uh, that caught our eye. We wanted to stop in and hear what's the latest. And Eric, you want to introduce yourself and then tell us what's new. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, my name is Eric Fisher. I'm the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Blue Arc EV Solutions and also Shift Innovation under the Shift Group. Uh, Blue Arc is really our go-to brand, uh, to market brand under the electrification. So anything that fits on the EV chassis, the new wave of bodies that we're creating are lightweight or more aerodynamic, and also charging solutions such as the Power Cube. So all that today, uh, what we're offering here or launching or unveiling is our latest uh, innovation, which is one of a kind uh, EV solution that is a crew cab that's never existed before that combines the flexibility, ergonomics, and safety of a walk-in van feature into a cab chassis. And I'll walk you through and show you. But everything you see on this truck was designed from the ground up, from push bar all the way up to the tail lights, headlights, everything else was really designed to reduce weight and improve efficiency. And I can tell aerodynamics. Yes, That's absolutely. the first thing that I noticed on here. Yeah, so we've done all the studies on this for the coefficient of drag. Yeah. Rolling resistance, so we made sure that when we designed this truck, it's going to get the best performance, yeah. which what we announced a few days ago, that this truck is a 14,000 GBW, can get 200 mile range wow. with 45 MPGE, which is super impressive for a big box going yes. down the highway. Oh, yeah. So and that's... Sorry, I was yeah, going to say, go like, I want to, how many seats are in there? I keep seeing people come walking out, and we heard the doors slamming in the background. Yeah, so we're going <laughs> to probably solid. do one of the... We can, you can see it up to six people inside this truck. On the, the side right here is the driver, so we normally don't try to encourage people to exit out of the side. We always try to promote safety, which is on the passenger side. We have larger steps to get into the truck. All right, and, I'm going around the other side here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what you see here is pretty Oops, much the, the safety features what we try to offer our customers. You can see how wide the steps are, electric step on the bottom, the sliding doors, and being able to get inside and stand up, that's key to us. This truck could be as a mobile office, so we can mount two desks in the back. You have Wi-Fi, you got a monitor up front. So you, you see connect your four computer. seats in the back. Yeah. So this really, you know, you got storage, you got a lot more space. So it's not just a people mover. This is more of an office. That can be on a job oh, site yeah, like doing all the work. Yeah, so that's a 12 inch display, dual application, you can do turn by turn direction, 360 camera. Everything here is practical, simple for the job. This is a tool. This is not a, a, a you know, something that is competing with a Tesla. Yeah. But this is a product that actually gonna be out on the street doing work every day for eight hours. And, and it looks like that. I could, if I'm wearing gloves, I could use this easily. Yes, yes. not and a lot of touch screens, not a lot of fancy stuff. There's a lot of things here that we can, it's modular that we can customize for the end use where they can have handheld device, docking stations. We can turn this into different things. Oh, look at this too. Yeah, so that would be monitor that you can connect to a laptop, being able to use this as an office. You said, yeah. Uh, matter of fact, our CEO took a, a, a conference call yesterday out of, this, out of this truck, trying to prove the point. Love it. We may have to arrange that with you, like a remote. Uh... Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so that's the, that's really what we're trying to create. Again, solutions that don't exist that can support a market um, needs and providing new new solutions. So the nice thing about this, like I said earlier, is you don't have to open a door into traffic. Yeah. You can drive with the doors open, right? Yeah. And then you got all your steps protected from the elements, snow and ice. And that's, you know, I spend my whole life in commercial space and that was one of the injuries places yeah kind of steps are all covered in ice and especially in the northern states with all the ice build up and snow so th this thing right here is scalable from 178 190 to 208 wheelbase this truck right now is equipped with lfp uh, lithium-ion batteries and those batteries can scale up from 158 to 248 and 316 so we can offer a range of energy that could be used on a site uh you know uh, for doing all kinds of work so this truck right here is equipped with a dump bed that dump bed is actually powered by another what we call epto oh yeah so that thing can help between 12 to 27 kilowatts pushes out about 48 volts that can power all kinds of accessories 
and could be powered by itself through a shoreline or it can feed off the same batteries. What we equipped here is just to show an example. You know, California and some states are, are trying to get their landscapers and everybody else to switch to electric equipment. Nobody wants to hear that two cycle burning yes. all day. Right. So we equip this where you can install a bunch of battery chargers. You got USB, 110 outlets, extension cords. So think of it, this is like a mobile power station. Yeah. You can power a table saw, a cutoff saw, can, any contractor will be able to use this on the site and uh, you know, be able to drive back to a I location. Like and yeah. you said you you are gonna you can make it in just like a single row version. Yeah. So the single row will have to be a a, a, a different door design. Yeah. But right now we can do the crew cab and a crew max. Mm -hmm. But the nice thing about this, we control the design of the wheelbase that we can still do a crew yeah. cab and still give the customer the CA they want to put the accessories. Right. So 84 right. or 108 or whatever they need to be able to accommodate that. So everything here was really built from the ground up to be an EV lightweight. And like I said, that aluminum body helps dump yeah. body from our sister company. And uh, some of the unique things that we've done by integrating all the batteries inside the frame to keep the saddle bags open for people to do, uh, uh, you know, all kinds of accessories. We designed a patent pending suspension that goes underneath the frame for a class five. Mm. So then we can put the duals because you normally have to taper right, the frame right. to allow for the suspension. So again, we're we're always thinking outside the box. And that keeps to find your costs solution. down, yeah. Absolutely. That and those rails can stay straight? Yes, rails can stay straight. So I can put three different battery packs without having to impact the wheelbase. Yeah. We went with the E-axle again for best efficiency. Yeah. And that's what I was telling you about, a 45 MPG on a work truck like this. Yeah. And a lot of thought and work went into it to make sure that it's efficient. And did I hear it right? You're gonna be making these and delivering them to customers? Later this year. Yeah, so. Third and fourth quarter? Yeah, third quarter, we're starting production in Charlotte, Michigan. Uh, we're a Michigan based company. Like uh, to hear that? A Michigan based yeah. battery supplier? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so we got two battery suppliers. We, we love our partners, the local partners, to help support the local business. Uh, but uh, the class three is right now actually in the ride and drive. So if you guys want to see our walking van, you can take it for a spin. Yeah. We do. Um, yeah. And uh, that will go first in production. And then after that will be the class five cap chassis and we'll continue to add to that product uh, line. And are you seeing a lot of customers from California now yes. to start with? I yeah. can see that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We have a lot of power utility companies, a lot of the contractors. And so a lot of the fleets now that want to grow their fleet, yeah. there's a requirement. You have to re retire a diesel truck to replace it yeah. with diesel. So the only way for them to grow is to add EV. Yeah. Otherwise they will have to take one out. So you can't really grow that way, which is great. That's going to help them be more sustainable. And uh, we're being very strategic. So we think that this vocation is great for EV. Yeah. Parcel, it's a given route, makes 150 stops a day, a lot yeah. of regen. You're not right. doing a lot of high speed driving. This right here, school buses, refuse, anything that really kind of goes in an urban area, got a given route has an average speed of 45 miles an hour. EV yeah. is a perfect You can charge overnight. And, exactly. Yep. They don't do work at night. They charge municipalities. So we're seeing a lot of in interest from the railroads, power companies, um, utilities. All those guys are love this because they normally drive 20 miles, go to a side, put, go into a yeah. manhole and work all day there. Yeah. So yeah. they want that truck to be able to provide energy on site. Right. And, and do it in a, in a clean way. Um, right. sustainable matter. I like it. I like it. All right. Well, thank you for taking the time. I've yeah. seen you've been very thank busy you. here. Yeah. Appreciate it. Absolutely. We gotta, we're going to get outside to get a test drive. Yeah. And uh, so our subscribers, thank you again. Press the like button. Tell your friends uh, to subscribe. You get more great content like this with Eric. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you again. Yeah, absolutely. It's my pleasure. Hey, Monroe fans, back here at Work Truck Week, and we stopped by this booth, <coughs> this booth we didn't recognize, C Electric, so we wanted to see what's going on. We bumped into Joseph. He was kind enough to give us a little background. We said, you know what, let's get this on film. So 
Joseph, if you want to introduce yourself and then give us some of the highlights that we were talking about. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Nice to meet everyone. Hi, I'm Joseph Greenlee. I'm VP of Engineering for Sea Electric. Today, I just want to take you over our Kino 195 that we have here. So this is what you call a cab over chassis. So when we receive this, it's a glider um, and it comes from Hino in, in Japan. And so as you see here, we'll receive the frame rails and the chassis and then high level we'll electrify it with a battery electric vehicle powertrain system. The frame rails come with all these holes already drilled in them. So that allows us to bolt our components on easily um, on this vehicle. Just taking you through a little bit of the technology starting at the back. This is a direct drive system. There is no transmission single speed reduction. You're able to mount straight to the rear differential that's currently on the vehicle. This vehicle is able to go 65 miles an hour with the direct drive up to 20% grades. That's a 1500 Newton meter permanent magnet motor. This, this motor is liquid cooled. On top of its motor control unit here is liquid cooled. If we keep moving our way up the frame rail, these are our battery packs on this vehicle. Sea Electric, one of the, the value propositions we have is we're able to package the cells um, and, and we start at the cell level. So it's a 17.5 amp hour pouch cell NMC that we start with. And we can decide how many are in parallel, how many are in series. So that's gonna dictate our voltage and how much capacity we have kilowatt hours. This pack itself is 138 kilowatt hours. We have 20 cells in parallel, 108 in series. So our voltage range nominal is 394 volts nominal. This pack between the front and the back, um, like I said, was 138 kilowatt hours. One other very key thing to this is we are mounted in between the frame rails. We are not slung onto the side for safety characteristics and reasons. On top of this really lowers the center of gravity of this vehicle and gives you a more stable ride, even compared to the ICE vehicle um, when you're driving these. These batteries have also gone through, uh, since we are located in South Africa, Australia, Europe, and the United States, ECE Reg 100, AIS 038, which are battery test standards. Um, AIS 038 is in India. We just recently launched an Aisher chassis there. Very similar to this, 8 point, 8 point, um, it's right around eight tons GVWR, ca cab over design. And so we had to go through one of the most stringent battery testings because it, it mimics ECE Reg 100 Rev 3 in Europe. And they have, even have a thermal propagation section where You've heard a lot about thermal runaway, but you will actually create thermal runaways within the pack and make sure they're designed properly for and react properly for one of those um, scenarios. This what? is the power steering system here. Uh, okay. So you will have brake and steering. It's a tandem pump. Um, this mimics the same pressure and flow as what you would have for the ICE system. So this is an electric motor just powering. This is a standard gear pump with uh, displacements and, and speed is set for the, the pressure and flow of the hydraulic system. Inside of the component box here, there is a DC to DC right down here. So this takes your high voltage 400 volts down to 24 volts DC. I say this is the alternator uh, just to keep it simple for everybody else. All the power distribution is done with inside this PDU. So your battery management systems in there, your high voltage interlock and high voltage interlocks. If you unplug a high voltage cable, the high voltage system needs to shut down. And that is a safety characteristic we have. This is your air conditioning compressor here. That, that basically acts just like what your air conditioning compressor would if it was belt driven off of an engine, but this is an electronically high voltage air conditioning compressor. The central vehicle controller is located here. We write all our own software in house and our system architecture is set up with a top level central vehicle controller where all the, the secondary controllers feed information up to that central vehicle controller and then we can make a decision from there. So what that allows me to do is I can pick the best motor for this GVWR, the best battery size for this GVWR and basically right size the system um, for this vehicle. On the other side of the chassis, if you'd like to come around, I can show you the charge point on these. This is a CCS1. So on this, we were able to charge at 19.2 kilowatts, um, which is dictated by J1772. That is a one key advantage for this because an AC charger is around $2,000 and um, it's a commodity. So you can find them on Amazon, the AC charging. Very easy for infrastructure installation. 
since we've kept the kilowatt of these down, we're able to AC charge these batteries overnight where some of our competitors will have 300 and 400 kilowatt hours. That will not be feasible to AC charge overnight. You will need multiple days to AC charge. So you will be forced into DC charge, which we also do offer. We have 80 kilowatts capable of DC, DC charge. Um, it just costs a little bit more in the infrastructure um, to get a DC charger installed, but this does come full DC charge capable on this vehicle. Thank you for your All time right. today. Yes, so thank you. I'm going to hand it back thank over you. to Mike here. I appreciate it. Uh, very thorough, very uh, technical for our audience. We appreciate that. So to our subscribers, keep uh, pressing the like button and tell your friends.